Bonjour everyone, welcome back to Lineup Predictions here on the Magpie Channel TV, as well as the match preview for, oh, I don't even want to say it, tomorrow's game against Manchester United, away at Old Trafford, 3 o'clock kickoff, not on television, as Premier League 3 o'clock kickoffs on a Saturday aren't anymore, due to lockdown, well, kind of being ended, but yep, yeah, join us here for the watch along, we will be here tomorrow to take you through. What's well, going to be a dreadful game, let's be honest. I don't really want to do this, but here we are. Just going to jump in and have a little say hello to people. Dale was in nice and early with the comments. i seen that, Dale. Good 20 seconds before we went live. Thank you very much. And what can I get at today? Neither at the minute. Still a little bit early for me. Got some things to do, but then we'll see where the night takes. We're probably stellar. Hello, Jake. Good to see you as always. 4 nil easy. Anything less than I'll be disappointed in United. Which way is that going to go? If it's 4 0 to Newcastle and it's sarcasm, then fair enough, I get you. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to jump into it. Yeah, Man United away. Had Old Trafford, three o'clock kickoff. Third place Man United are currently sitting in compared to our 17th. Fourth bottom, their third top. We've both drew one game. They've won two. We've lost two. One point on the board for us. No wins on record. And it, as we all know, it's been an absolute shambles of a season so far, going out of the Carabao Cup in, this, in the second round. One game in against Burnley, lost that on penalties. And we've got a mega, mega tough game coming up, of course. It's Man United. They were already a pretty good team, had a very, very good transfer window with the likes of Sancho and Varane coming in. And uh, they made another one just before the international break there. Has anybody heard of Cristiano Ronaldo? Did anybody know he was going back to Man United or is this breaking news? If you didn't already know, Cristiano Ronaldo signed for Manchester United. That's some uh, inside scoop for you. Uh, he's in line to make his debut, of course. Um, came back early from international break after being suspended for Portugal's last game. So he's been back training with the team. He hasn't really had much training this week, only a few games. But when you have that elite a player... And Man United know all about him, of course. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if he's had one day's training, one week, one month, one year. He's probably going to make an impact. Or he's confirmed he will make his debut. He didn't necessarily specify from the start or from the bench, but he's definitely in line to make his debut. Uh, we'll have a run through their team news first. And Fred is potentially out 50-50 with all that bullshit going on in Brazil. We'll talk about the other South Americans on Newcastle's team in a minute, but... Uh, Ollie's not sure what the crack is with Fred yet. He says they're preparing for the game without him, although he may be included. So that's very much 50 50. Uh, Jaden Sancho is a doubt. So that's good news, I suppose. There's, there's a couple out Fred, Sancho, uh, Dean Henderson, Alex Tellez, Scott McTominay, and Phil Jones have been out but are back in training. However, not expected to feature. So that's another good one, apart from them. Henderson would be on the bench. Tellers doesn't play much. Phil Jones hasn't played since 1902. Uh, Scott McTominay is the only one who may have played, but they've got reserves, so that's no big deal. Uh, Rashford's recovering from shoulder surgery. Uh, and uh, that's it from them. So, yeah, bit, only main ones out. McTominay, uh, Fred, Rashford and Sancho. But looking at the depth of their team, it doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter if Ronaldo wasn't available yet. They've still got the likes of Cavani. Martial, Lingard, whoever else they've got. I can't even think of that team off the top of my head. Uh, to replace Fred and uh, McTominay, they've got the experience of Nemanja Matic in there, uh, the likes of Juan Mata. Th they've got options. Like it, it doesn't matter who's in or out who's for their team. They're not Newcastle. Most other Premier League teams don't need to worry about a few injuries because they're fine. They've got depth. A couple of Newcastle players go down and it's game over before the game's even began. Starting with... Callum Wilson, biggest news of the day. I think everybody expected it. Picked up an injury right before the uh, the end of the last game. Um, people didn't know if he was going to make it or not. It was looking ever so likely that he wasn't going to be, but Brucey confirmed that he definitely won't be uh, in the game tomorrow against Man United. He's picked up a thigh injury and a muscle strain. He refused to put a time scale on it. Not too sure how long it's going to be which isn't really good for us. We would like to just think, of, to be fair, he talks shit most of the time anyway. He'll tell you it's one week and you'll not see him for a month. He'll tell you he's out for a month and you'll see him next week. So he hasn't put a time scale on Callum Wilson, so fingers crossed he can be fit for the coming game, which is Leeds United at home 
uh, next Friday, a week today, we're playing Leeds. Uh, Miggy Almiron is available. Speaking of Fred and the doubts around Southern American players and if they'll be eligible, people putting blocks on them, even though most of them weren't even playing for that international countries. Pretty sure Fred wasn't. I don't think Almiron was either. Did he play for Paraguay this international break? I'm not sure. You tell me. Uh, nobody's mentioned Joe Linton. Joe Linton's one of the Brazilians. The Brazilian FA putting a ban on various players like Fred, like Alisson, um, Fabinho, Firmino, all, all kinds of Brazilian players across the league. Nobody's mentioned Joe Linton yet. Brucey didn't confirm nor deny that he was going to be available or unavailable. So where do we stand with Joe Linton? I don't know. But Miggy Almiron is available. Both Brucey and Solskjaer said, hopefully sense prevails and that they will be allowed to play. Almiron's had the thumbs up. Fred hasn't yet. And like I say, I don't think anybody cares about Joe Linton, to be honest. So we'll just skip right on from that one. Um, Ryan Fraser is another first team injury who won't make it. He has a twisted ankle. Uh, Brucey did say that it's not as bad as first feared. Uh, images going around social media. I think we put it out there on the Magpie channel Instagram as well of him coming out of the game in Scotland wearing a space boot on crutches. So it looked like a bad one. People were anticipating it being a lengthy one, a few weeks, a few months. I don't know. But Brucey says it's not as bad as first feared. It's only precautionary. The boot and the crutches are only precautionary. But again, no time scale. So it could literally be anything. We're still waiting to hear. An update on how long that's going to be. Um, Carl Darlow trained, has trained for the first 10 days. Uh, Bruce says has a big improvement in him and is in contention. A decision will be made on him in the next 24 hours. Maybe it's not as big a deal as it seems, Carl Darlow. If he is in contention, I would assume it would only be on the bench to replace Mark Gillespie. Uh, Freddie Woodman's come in and, you know, he hasn't done a bad job. I feel sorry for the kid. He's conceded, what, is it eight goals now? Eight goals in the first three games. Looks bad on paper, but he hasn't really been at fault of any of them. Could have got close at the one or two of them. Been done over by VAR and penalty shouts. He even saved one. Uh, was that um, Antonio that took the penalty at West Ham? Rebounded in by Suchek. Like, the, the kid hasn't put a foot wrong in my eyes, but, yeah, his confidence can't be great. First three games of his Premier League career conceded eight goals, but that's definitely down to a bad defence. So make what you will with Darlow. Let me know your lineup predictions, guys, as they're coming in. I'll see you in the comments. I'm going to jump back into yours in a minute. Let me know what you think. Give me a score prediction and a lineup prediction as well. Would you start Carl Darlow if he's fit? Would you put him on the bench or would you not even risk him for another week? Just stick with Woodman and Gillespie. Let me know. Um, Isaac Hayden. And Elliot Anderson are back in first team training now. Uh, they're 50-50. Bruce hasn't really confirmed their involvement yet, but they are back in training. So I can only assume that they'll be in contention. It would be great to see Isaac Hayden back in because without them, it's going to be... Shelby's still out, going to be out for another few weeks, as is Dubravka. Um, Dummett as well. I haven't really heard much about Paul Dummett. I heard during the week that he could be in contention at the start. And I... Early lineup predictions, I usually put a few in during the week just to see how it goes, waiting for the press conferences. But I didn't actually hear Brucey mention it. I had a flick through his press conference. Nobody mentioned Paul Dummett. But I'm saying from the odd source that he's still unavailable, Dummett, because he was back in training before the international break. And I'm sure he was on the bench as well. Was it the Southampton game before the international break? I'm sure he made the bench. But reports are not non-official forms uh, are saying that Dummett's still out. So... Yeah, well, without Dubravka, Shelby, Dummett, Fraser and Wilson. Almiron's available, Darlow's in contention, as is Hayden and Elliot Anderson. And someone who we may see, or at least a spot on the bench, as well, so many players out, unlike Man United, who can just put anyone the fancy in. Uh, Joe White, young lad, has been in first team training for us this week. He's been training for the last 10 days, the same as Carl Darlow has for the first team. Uh, Brucey says he may be involved tomorrow. He's going to travel with the team and very well may be included in the match day squad. Uh, if you don't know much about Joe White, he's an 18-year-old attacking midfielder, quite similar to Elliot Anderson. Been doing all right for himself. Played for the club since he was 16, I think I read, 15 or 16. Come from Carlisle, his hometown. Uh, yeah, been doing all right for the under-23s. Uh, he played in the preseason friendly for the first team, came off the bench in... One game, I think it was the Rotherham game. Yeah, Rotherham, I think it was. He 
played first team in the preseason friendly against Rotherham. He's an un- England under 18 international, a few caps for them. So, is he the next one of tomorrow? Is he going to be the, the future of the club? Uh, with Elliot Anderson as well, like you say, like he's in contention, being back in training. He could be the next n- new young boy through the door next to Matty Longstaff and all of them. Uh, so that's pretty much the Newcastle team news. Uh, Jamal Lewis, Emil Kraft, Fabian Shaw and Jeff Hendrick were the players on international duty over the last couple of weeks and have came through unscathed. So no new injury news there to worry about, which is great. Uh, before I go into the lineups, done the team news, just going to have a look at past games between us. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really just not pretty, as you can assume, especially at Old Trafford. At St. James's, it's not even that bad, to be fair. Done all right the last few, uh, well, last few seasons, I suppose. Uh, we haven't won at Old Trafford since the 2013 14 season, a 1 0 win in which Johan Kabai got the winner. Since then, um, let's say we drew with them in 2015 16, 0 0, goalless draw down there. In the last four seasons, I'm, I'm sure we've gone up in three out of four of them, we've taken the lead. Uh, 17 18, we went 1 0 up through Dwight Gale, got beat 4 1. The 18 19 season, oh my God, that was the great one where on paper it was a shite team. But we were doing all right, we were 2 0 up at half time. Goals from Kennedy and Muto, early goals, I think first 10 minutes we were 2 0 up. Amazing day, me and Renty were down there. What an away day that was for the first 75 minutes or so. Half time in the concourse, 2 0 up, away to Man United. Everyone chucking beers all hour, it was class. What an atmosphere that was. But of course, we got beat last 12 minutes or so. Man United came back and scored three goals. Late winner from Alexis Sanchez. So we're taking L that day. Uh, the year afterwards, after making his debut, I think the last time we beat Man United was at home. Matty Longstaff making his Premier League debut, scoring the first and only goal in that game. And then the reverse fixture away, Matty Longstaff again on the score sheet, put him a 1-0 up very early on. First five minutes, I think that was. And another 4-1 defeat at the end of that one. Uh, last season, uh, we took an early defeat, I think it was. Uh, went 1-0 down. So Maximin equalised just before half time, And uh, I didn't even write the full-time score. Can't even remember what the score was. Was it 3-1? You tell me in the comments. I can't even remember. It was 3-1 or 4-1. So yeah, we've got a good habit of going 1-0 up and then losing 4-1, basically. So if you want to get your money on that, it's a good place to start. Uh, so yeah, like I say, the last time we beat them was the 18, uh, the 1920 season at St. James's Park with Matty Longstaff's uh, only goal. Uh, yeah, last win at home, 1920. And as I say, they've won two so far this season against Leeds and Wolves and Drew with Southampton, same as us. The only point we've got so far this season was with Southampton and that's all they could take from them down at St Mary's. So, yeah, that is the match preview and team news up to date. Let's have a look at the comments before I show you my lineup prediction. It's going to be a depressing match. Yeah, it's not going to be the best. As a Newcastle fan, I have no hope. I don't really blame you. At least beyond Arsenal. We're ahead of Arsenal. That's a very good point. Arsenal sitting rock bottom of the Premier League. At least we're fourth bottom. We're not that bad. We're not even in the bottom three. Haven't even won a game yet. Not even in the bottom three, unlike Arsenal. Afternoon, Diego. You guys are getting slapped. Yeah, absolutely. Say it how it is, mate. You know, no, one, no one here is going to argue with you. I hope we lose less than 3 0. You know? <laughs> That's the mad optimism among the USL fans at the minute. It's like, I hope to lose by less than three goals. That's as good as it gets. No one's like, oh, I might get a scrappy 1 0 win, uh, just as long as we don't get hammered. You know, 3 0, borderline. If we get beat 2 0, not a bad result. Uh, Andrew's a USL fan and his predictions at 4 1 loss. I'll go something similar. I'll tell you mine at the end, but yeah, it's going to be on that line. Uh, usually start okay against Man United, yeah, as I just said, then fall apart and get stuffed as always. Our defence has been so poor, I can't imagine them facing Ronald. My God, it's not even worth thinking about. I'm even looking at my lineup prediction and it's lifting. Just thinking about who we might come up against. Like I say, even Sancho and Rashford are out, but they're still going to have Ronaldo, Cavani, Martial, Mata, Lingard, Bruno Fernandes, Pogba. It's, oh, it's lifting. Might have played two games. Yeah, <laughs> it's against us. That's true. That he scored the first goal when we were two 0 up. I remember that we were two 0 up at Old Trafford. They got a free kick. I think it was must have been about twelve minutes before the end of the game in Juan Mata territory. Perfect for a left footer, just on the edge of the box, twenty yards. And I think at that time, Renty pulled out his phone and put a two-two bet on. 
He says, I can see this going in. And I was the same. I was like, I can guarantee this is going top corner. We've both seen that coming. Rentley put a 2-2 bet on at that moment. Lo and behold, top corner, 2-1, shortly after 2-2. And I don't think he had the signal to cash out on the 2-2 before Alexis Sanchez scored the winner. Uh, Going to get pumped. Oh, Callum Lewis, hello, mate. Yeah, on the Gallagher Shots podcast the other night. Go check that out. I think it's the latest one on there. Just a Q&A with the boys. Good crack. Good, good night. I enjoyed it. Thanks, Gallagher Shots, if you're watching. Tomorrow game against... Oh, yeah. Newcastle's 1,000th game in the Premier League. I think we're the only the eighth team to do that. Uh, yeah, as Diego says, I should just read on what Diego says. Just come do the podcast for you, mate. Do the Leeds line of prediction if you want, because if we get beat fucking 5 6 nil tomorrow, ah, can't be asked. So, yeah, Diego's going to do the line for you next week. Yeah, tomorrow game against uh, it will be the Magpies' 1,000th game in the Premier League, and we are the eighth club only to reach that milestone. Mate, that, that, that's so true. Like, say, if you go watch the Gallagher Shots podcast, we'll even mention that. I think Decker said, like, people kicking off that Bruce went on holiday during the national break. While, yeah, on, on the surface, he should have stayed. The lads shouldn't have had a holiday. Should have made them do extra, extra graft. We didn't deserve a holiday. We've been lifting. No wins in four. And then we're coming up against Man United, led by Cristiano Ronaldo, and Bruce just swanning off in Portugal. But as Decker said, doesn't matter. We've had all preseason. We've had months to prepare for this season. It's been lifting. Brucey doesn't make a fucking difference in the world. He, sh- he could have stayed in Portugal. People kicking off that he went there for a few days. Go for a few years. L- it's literally not going to make any difference in the world. Is Joey on even a Brazilian? Nah, I don't know. I haven't seen his passport, to be honest, but we'll see. Callum says Joey is in contention for the Mara. Thanks for clarifying that. It's only for players who were called up for international break. But is it, though? Because that's what I thought. Because when I seen the news about which Brazilian players weren't eligible. I'm sure most of them weren't even on it national break. I don't think Fred was. Yet yeah, Fred's 50-50. Like, they're still trying to fight for Fred to play tomorrow. So I, I don't even know what the crack is. Like, it doesn't even make any sense. I don't even know why Almiron, there was discussions about Almiron not being able to play. Like, none of it makes any sense. If anyone can clarify it, please do. Because it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's some mad fucking super political shit that I can't be asked with. Uh, yeah, it's not really a football player. Well, that's up for debate. Uh, Dolo much better than Woodman quite possibly, debatable uh, let's like say before, would you start him though if he's had so long off he even got injured towards the back end of last season hasn't had a pre-season it's been out for ages so if Dolo's available, would you replace him with Freddie Woodman, that's my big question to you get your comments in 5-0 Man United, or a draw, you know how it is yeah, so right, we'll either get pumped or it'll be a close scrappy encounter they might scrape a 1-0 win we might scrape a 1-0 win we're that kind of team. Every game we're going to where we expect to get yarks, like Leicester at the end of last season. We tend to do all right against the teams that we expect to get pumped by, but things just aren't normal at the minute. So, yeah, it could definitely, definitely be a huge uh, Man United win. As Dale said, we we'll always show up against the so-called big teams. Uh, it's given football, stranger things have happened, but, yeah, you've got to be honest with yourself, 4-5-0, of course. Diego says 4-1 Man United. Ronaldo has no chance when he's coming up against the Swedish Can- Cannavaro Emil Kraft. Yeah, Anthony Taylor from Manchester is refereeing the game, so that's good. Of course they are. Premier League's fucked over every game so far, so yeah, let's just let, just let fucking Roy Keane manage it or someone. You know, get, get Fergie on with a whistle in a black and white shirt, who cares? Uh, shame it's not on TV, usually is a classic rivalry, yeah. Bruce is a dead man. 7-0, 7-1, sorry, our goal is going to be an OG. Yeah, it's quite possible. I think it was. Was it last year at home? Uh, yeah, I think we got beat 4-1 that game as well, didn't we? we went 1-0 up in that game. Emil Kraft with a cross in. And I think it was turned in by Luke Shaw at the start. So, yeah. Yeah, got on the score sheet. But, yeah, it was Luke Shaw on goal. So, yeah, that was cracking. But come away with a, with a point. Yeah, of course we would. You'd go down to Old Trafford nine times out of ten and be happy with a point coming out of it. Yeah. Uh, Wonder if Man United score a thousand goals tomorrow. Well, someone might. Someone's going to be up for it. You know what I mean? I have a small feeling we'll do a shock win, but I doubt that Ronaldo Penn VR decision for his hat trick. Four one Man United to sit back with eight statues. Yeah, of course we will. Every, every time. I remember back in the day, like if you didn't know, here's a little stat for you. Out of all the, I, I don't even know off the top of my head. I'm not even kind of even be asked to Google this, but Ronaldo scored a ridiculous amount of hat tricks in his career. Dozens. I'm sure he's got a record or he's like one of the top five, top three 
uh, hat-trick scorers in the history of world football. But on his five or so years it was in Manchester, he only managed one hat-trick. Guess what that was against? Guess which stadium it was at? Newcastle at Old Trafford, of course it was. I remember that day I was out. I, I, I remember being out and I remember checking my phone. I think I was in Newcastle somewhere. I was out with some mates. I was probably only about 16 or something at the time. And I remember I was like, oh, shit, the match is on. I completely forgot about it. Then uh, I checked my phone. It was half time and it was nil-nil. I was like, oh, not bad. And that was like when like Ronaldo was in his prime, like 23 years old, Ballon d'Or winner, Champions League winner, Premier League winner, Rooney and Tevez, unbelievable team back then. So yeah, I checked my phone, half time, nil-nil, not bad, I'll take that. Against the, the Premier League and Champions League winners, not bad, must be playing well. Again, forgot about it, checked my phone about an hour later, full time, 5-0. Ronaldo hat-trick, good day, typical. Uh, right, going to come back to your comments afterwards, but I've been waffling on way too long looking at your comments. So I'm going to get into the lineup prediction, starting with Freddie Woodman in goal. You can keep your spot for me. Yeah, so he hasn't really put a foot wrong yet. As uh, someone said before in the comments, Darlo arguably is the better goalkeeper out of the two of them. But for me, there's no point changing us. Like, Woodman needs confidence. If he can pull out a worldie in this game, like what Darlo done against Tottenham last season, uh, that was away, Tottenham away, and Liverpool at home, I think it was. Darlo pulled out a couple of unbelievable performances Going into the last season, if we thought we were going to have to play the full season or most of the season with Darlow instead of Dubravka, would have shit with pants. Now, so far, Woodman hasn't really had the rub of the green, but I think the kid needs a chance. If he comes up good against Man United, and even if we just lose 1-0, scrappy VAR decision, the kid can hold his head high. Like, But yeah, with how long Darlow has been out and unavailable, unfit, injuries, COVID, I wouldn't throw him in against Man United at Old Trafford against Ronaldo. It's like throwing lamps to the slaughters. Fuck that. So now nah, Woodman's keeping his place for me. Uh, back three, uh, just the same as what was going to be against um, Chef, uh, not Sheffield, Southampton. Uh, it wasn't a bad defensive performance. I don't really think Southampton showed a great lot in that game, to be honest. Uh, it was just a shite first half from even a neutral perspective. Like we were at the game, one of the worst first halves of football I've seen in my life. But yeah, Southampton weren't really that entertaining, didn't really threaten too much. I don't really think the defenders put much of a foot out the line. Uh, Fernandez has looked a bit knackered at the start of the season. Uh, I'd, I'd love to make a change, let's say, before if, before I found out anything about Dummett. And I still don't really know anything about Dummett. I'm just hearing from one source. I don't know how reliable it is that uh, Dummett's going to be unavailable tomorrow. I'd give him a chance, me. I'd probably throw him in. I'd take Fernandez out because he has looked knackered. Uh, Shaw's doing all right at the minute. International duties uh, had a good time at the Euros. You know, like, this is his setup playing in the back five where he's got more cover, can carry the ball forward. That's what he's best at doing. And Lascelles, he's the captain, leader. He can stay in there. It's so uninspiring. It's lifting to think that that's going to go up against like Ronaldo and Cavani and whoever else is playing tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it's it's absolutely frightening so far. So. Continue with the back five. Of course, the wing backs, usual suspects in Jacob Murphy and Matt Ritchie. Nobody else really to replace them. You could debate Jamal Lewis or Javier Manquillo. Would they make much of a difference? Would they better the team? Would they cause anyone any threat? Ronaldo, Lingard, whoever it may be, Martial. Who's going to do better? It's, it's frightening. We're clutching at straws. We're just. The team kind of picks itself. It's just so automatic. Like this, for me, is becoming so easy, really, just to pick 11 players because it's just the same shit week, out, week in, week out, really. It doesn't matter who the opposition it is. It could be Cristiano Ronaldo's Man United. It could be Newport, New Key, Torquay. It could be anyone. Bruce is going to say this, play the same shit, same bollocks tactics, formation, same personnel. Yeah, it's, it's just shit. So, yeah, that's my back five. Um... Anyone else we could put in there? Emil Kraft's available. Clark's available. As I said, Mankio and Lewis. But is are any of them going to strengthen anything unless we play eight at the back? As someone said before, just play eight defenders and fucking some maximum up top or something. That's the only way we can potentially stop Ronaldo banging a hat-trick. So any other suggestions, let me know in the comments. Let me see who you would play in defence. Of course, you're probably going to say back four. But how put yourself in British's mind. This is what I'm doing. I'm not putting out this shit on my own behalf. 
Uh, centre mids, uh, Sean Longstaff and Joe Willock. Um, Willock, pretty much an automatic starter without um, Hayden being fully fit. He's in contention. He's been back in training. Uh, Shelby's injured, so they're the only midfield options that we possibly have, apart from fucking Jeff Hendrick, maybe Joe White, maybe Elliot Anderson, but f- nah, I, I can't see Brucey doing that. He's It's going to be a first-teamer. It's going to be Hendrick, or he's going to risk uh, Hayden. So other than that, I think Sean Longstaff and Joe Willock are just the safe options. That's all it is, really. Joe Willock, absolutely, he's a starting 11 player. He can start week in, week out for me. Uh, so far this season, hasn't been so impressive. I think he set a bar for himself that I knew we couldn't expect him to maintain. Finishing the season last season, seven goals and seven. Nobody could have expected him to do that. It's like Obviously, he hasn't. Has he been underperforming? Quite possibly. I'm not too sure. Like, like I said, I think he set a too high a bar for himself that we're not too sure what his consistent level is yet. So, yeah, Willock starting and then alongside him, flip of a coin, who's it going to be? My bet is Sean Longstaff. And in terms of the front three, uh, I'm not sure how we're going to line up, to be perfectly honest. I've got my personnel in. Where they're going to fit in, I don't know for the life of us, but I'm putting in... It was either going to be a flip of a coin between Gale and Joe Linton to replace Joe Will- uh, Callum Wilson, of course. So mine is Joe Linton to play alongside Almiron and Sir Maximin. Whether Almiron plays more as a central midfielder, as Sky always say that he lines up in, like a th- central midfield three, which in this case would be Longstaff, Willock and Almiron in the middle, with Sir Maximin up front. Or he could play Sir Maximin up front, Almiron in the hole as a number 10. But regardless, we need a striker in there. We could even play a false nine. We like to do that last season. Could have Almiron and Sir Maximin play a false nine with Joel on potentially on the left or or the right, which is where he's usually best for me on the left. Uh, so, yeah, where they're going to play for me, I don't know, but that's definitely the personnel I'm going to put in. Sir Maximin's an obvious one. Almiron's pretty much an obvious one. The only questionable one is Joel Linton and will he play up front or not? Uh, Sir Maximin, though, look at his face. Look at that. Look at the smile on that face. What a man. What an absolute great man. Even his face, just just look at the smile on that. Even that just picks up the starting eleven, let alone what he does on the pitch. Uh, but I put out a great interview the other day, interviewed by the club. It says like they're just going to go for it. That they're not scared of it. I think United stand put a tweet out regarding Maxman's interview, and all the my United fans had nothing but praise for him. I was reading through some of the comments, and they say this man's going to terrorize us tomorrow. Could put a dampener on Ronaldo's debut. If anyone can, it's going to be him. I think it's going to be fight or flight. He's either going to be so quiet and deflated as he sometimes can be when we're playing shite, or he's going to give everyone a spark. He's going to take the game by the scruff of the neck, run at the defenders and cause them havoc. And he may do, he may not. Like they've got Varane and Maguire back there, um, Shaw and uh, Wan Bissaka. So yeah, it's going to be a tough game regardless. He's done well last season away at Old Trafford, got the goal just before half time. But yeah, my United fans look a bit look a bit scared of him. To be fair, he's the only outlet really, the only one who can re- maybe put a rainy day on Ronaldo's parade. And hopefully he does. Hopefully he is the shining star. So even if we we get beat, but keep it close, try and keep it scrappy. If we try and fight for a draw at the end and it doesn't come, Smaxman's putting in the effort. You know we can take that. We can take positives out of that. We can be happy enough. Uh, so yeah, that's my starting eleven anyway. We've got Woodman in goal. Flat back four, not a flat back four, sorry, wing back formation. Five at the back with Murphy and Richie outside of Shaw, Lascelles and Fernandez. Sean Longstaff and Joe Willock in the middle with a front three in any particular order of Miguel Almiron, Alan Samaxman and Joe Linton. And in terms of the bench, this is what I've got down. I've got Gillespie keeping his place on the bench for another week before Caldolo finally has another week of fitness to at least take a spot on the bench. I think he'll either be on the bench or in the starting eleven on Friday against Leeds. And we've got Emil Kraft, Javier Manquillo, Kieran Clark, and Jamal Lewis as potentially defensive options. Like I said before, I'm going to have a look at the comments in a minute on who you would start. Would you put any of them in the starting eleven in place of anybody that I've got in? I've got Isaac Hayden in. I don't know if he's fit enough. don't know if he's going to make it. But as you can tell by um, Joe White, we're short on options. So, yeah, Hayden's been back in training for a few days. Don't know if he's fit enough to even make the bench. 
but we're going to have to make up the numbers. Uh, he's the, about the same as Elliot Anderson. So if he's not, if Hayden's not fit, Anderson might get a spot on the bench and where we're going to have two young'uns on there. And then Jeff Hendrick and Dwight Gale. Like, uh, I, I hope Hayden's at least fit enough for the bench. I don't really want Brucey to throw him in the starting 11 if he's not fit. Although, of course, in place of Sean Longstaff, I would definitely prefer that. But I just don't want to see anyone getting any further injuries. Like, we can't really afford it. We haven't got the depth. We're not United City, Chelsea, Liverpool. We can't rotate as well as what them can. Like, as soon as Hayden and Shelby's out, we're looking at Jeff Hendrick and Sean Longstaff, potentially a few young'uns. And uh, yeah, Gales there could potentially start in place of Joe Lint on that one's a 50 50, really. I think one of them's definitely going to get a start. Could well be Dwight Gale. Wouldn't be surprised in the slightest to see Dwight Gale in the starting 11. And that's it from me. Going to have a look through your comments, show you the team again, and give you a score prediction. Let's see. I can't remember where I was at with the comments. Uh, where are we? A story of customized a back pocket with Emil Kraft shorts for Ronaldo. <laughs> Good one, I like it. Six nil win, three penalties. <laughs> Thanks to yeah, I can see it. Man United off notorious for getting penalties. Referees love to give them the decision, especially a one from Manchester. VAR is going to be Al Lauret, Ronaldo, or Fernandez. Whoever's going to take the penalties could have an absolute field day tomorrow. Uh, Fifty three hat tricks for Ronaldo, and only one in the Premier League against Newcastle. And that was a 6-0 game, not 5-0, sorry, at Old Trafford when Ronaldo scored his hat-trick. Thank you, Noel. Appreciate the update there. Keep me right. Uh, Rashford won't cope with the unreal pace of Federico Fernandes. Thankfully, he's not playing. <laughs> but there's others, like Martial might play. He hasn't really had much game time. I think he's a bit out of favour at the minute, but he's still got bags of pace. Bruce's team picks itself. Yeah, not in a good way. Not at all. Of course it doesn't. It's fucking lifting. Um... Yeah, we don't have a lot of options, to be fair. It is what it is, really. Uh, it's only if Julian was called up for the international break, but he won't be playing that. He won't be playing tomorrow. But as he was, I, I, I really don't know what the crack is. It's fucking left him. Uh, just made it think Willock will be a flop this season because he's nothing to prove now. Possibly. Let me know what you think about that. Like I said before, Joe Willock's performances so far this season... Have they been up to scratch? Have they been good enough? Or did he just set too high a bar last season that he's never going to reach again? Like, when you look at the people that he's in and around, like seven goals in seven games, there's not many players in Premier League history to do that. I think there's only three or four that scored eight goals in eight games. Like, he was nearly there. I think Shearer's won. And, like, he'd be in a notorious list. I think you've got, like, Van Nistelrooy, uh, Jimmy Vardy. I can't even remember who the others are, but... He's in a list of Premier League legends to have scored seven goals in seven games. So he set a massive bar for himself. So no one can expect them to reach the heights that he did in them seven games at, towards the end of last season. So, so far, is he a flop? Or is, does he just need more time to settle in as a regular player? I think last season he was fighting. I don't know if he was fighting for a move or trying to show it to Arsenal what he can do. Now he's got the permanent move. The pressure's off, really, in it. Like, well, he's, he's quite comfortably a starting 11 player. I think that's guaranteed. So... There's no pressure at all on him really now, so he doesn't really need to go crazy like he did at the end of last season. No, Almiron's not banned. Brucey confirmed this morning he'll be available. Harry Maguire has a head like a five-gallon bucket. Uh, can't find anything to say about Cabbage Bruce. It's not... Uh... That's the same team Tony would pick. Yeah, any other changes? Let me know what you people would do. No, nah, David Almiron is fit. Brucey confirmed that before. Yeah, you know, so shouldn't bother turning up. Yeah. My United are going to walk all over you. Yeah, but uh, you know what? People comment on this. Like, it's always my United fans now. Every time I would do like a watch along or something, my United fans are always in the comments having digs. Like, nothing you can say can hurt us. Do you not realize we know how shit we are and that we're going to get walked all over? Don't need to dig the knife in, mate. Now we've had it hard for the last 15 years. How about I give her a break? Throwing lamps at the slaughter, yeah. Uh, Paraguay isn't as bad as Brazil, so Amaron should be able to play. Yeah, love to see some sort of changes in the formation. Yeah, so would I. I'd love to go four three three or something again, but you know, Bruce, you'll shit the bed at Man United. So he'll, he takes things as they are, like old school. Like he still thinks it's like the Man United team he played in ninety five, uh, Cantona and that Beckham, Sharpie, Giggs. That's the kind of team he thinks that we're coming up against. Like to be fair, Man United are as good as they have been for the last few years. 
we showed them way too much respect in previous years, but now with the, even though he's injured, the likes of Sancho, Fernandez, Pogba, Ronaldo, uh, Varane, Maguire, Luke Shaw's coming to be one of the best left backs in the world. They're becoming a very, very good team, and they could be in contention this year, I think. Um, Lewis needs to get back in the team. Got a chance against Burnley. Didn't really impress all that much. Uh, how's the lad going to progress when he gets no game time? True. Big fan of Richie, but he's linking the moves every window and missing his family. Yeah. Like sooner or later, Jamal Lewis will come back into it. I think Richie just played a big part in with surviving last season with, like, obviously, with Lascelles being out. We didn't have a leader. And even though Matt Richie hasn't got the captain's armband, he's not really interested in being the captain. He's got all the credentials. He's the only player who will literally stick a boot up someone's ass for not playing. Or, or not pulling the boat, like not uh, pulling the. What am I trying to say? Not, not. Yeah, you know what I mean. Right. Richie's the man to do that, and uh, yeah, that, that's why he's in the team at the minute. Yeah, Lewis isn't going to progress if he's not getting any game time. But yeah, at the minute, I think we've got to stick with Richie where we're in this predicament, or at least until we can start getting some momentum, until we can start getting some like a run of form, some points on the board, try and break away from the bottom three. Although it might not happen at all this season, but. Yeah, we're just gonna have to take it game by game. Like squads win things, like like Man City, for example. A starting eleven doesn't win you now. It's a squad. So sooner or later, Lewis will come in. Richie always picks up an injury anyway, doesn't he? So sooner or later, Richie will probably pick up a big injury. Touch wood. Don't want to jinx that, but yeah, Lewis Lewis's time will come. Don't worry about that. Uh, on the volley, would play Gale up front. Again, Richie's had a shot the last few times. I think Lewis should come in. Good shout. Very possible. Ten Steve Bruce. Ten Steve Bruce. Prime Steve Bruce. Ninety-five Steve Bruce in defence. I would take him. Literally, rather have him playing centre back than being manager. Emma, yes, um, would have some chance of winning. Uh, with Ronaldo start tomorrow, I would, I would, I would bet on it. No guarantees at all. I would say it's wise not to really. I wouldn't rush him in. Like he's what thirty-seven years old now. He's only played for the last few games. Only trained with the team for the last few games. There's no pressure at all on him to start, but if, if you've got one of the greatest players literally of all time, not even currently in world football, since time began, he's one of the greatest to ever have played the game. Having him in your team from the bench, from the starting eleven, from the stands, supporting, sitting next to Fergie and Bobby Charlton up in the stands, it's so, it's only good things. So, yeah, it, I'm not even fucking bothered, to be fair. You can start if you want. Like, It's probably not even going to make much difference to the scoreboard at the end of the day. Uh, no, we'll not be going to United away. Um, yeah, we'll be doing the watch along. We'll be here. We'll be doing coverage, but now nah, we won't be there. Nine nil. Fernandez gets sent off in first ten minutes. If we get sent off in the first ten minutes, it literally could be like Southampton away uh, last season. Um, yeah, Southampton playing away at Old Trafford. I think they had a young lad play. I think it was his debut. Got sent off in the first twenty seconds or something. Got beat nine nil. That could very easily happen again. Doesn't even matter if it's Fernandez. Anyone, it'll be a shambles, especially if it's one of the centre backs. Yeah, it'll be an absolute shambles. Carl Lewis agrees with my team. I'll pop it on the screen just before the end there, even though the bottom will be covered out. Just guess who's playing the bottom three. I think you can see. Uh, that's the team I say playing, but Gale in for Almiron instead of Jolint on, as he will be tired from travelling. Plus, I've got a bad feeling we'll see more injuries coming out of this game for us. Yeah, possibly. Patrick thinks hat trick for Ronaldo. Ollie said he will play. He said he'll take. He said he'll play, yeah, but he didn't specify if it's from the start or from the bench. So, yeah, I do expect him to start 100%, but, yeah, he hasn't 100% guaranteed that he's going to start. Um, I'm glad it's, it's not TV. I'm fearful for tomorrow. Yeah, nobody wants to watch this shit. You're better off just staying at home. Um, Santiago Munez to start and score a hat-trick. Right, that's going to do for me. I've rabbited on long enough. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for your contribution. Uh, score line. I'm going to go... I've said the last few times I've played them, it's been a 4-1. I can see something similar. Could be more. Could be 5-0. Could be closer. I'm going to go... I think optimistically, honestly, I said it before, so I think someone said, like, as long as we don't get beat by any more than three goals, I'm extremely optimistically going for a 3-1 defeat. Not even a win. As long as... Yeah, that, that's how I can say it. Even if we get a goal, I think we'll, we'll be lucky. I think Ronaldo will run riot. Cavani, if he's fit. Uh, I don't even think I put him on. There he is, the prick. I think I forgot to put him on before when talking about them. So, yeah, the man is back. The goat is back. 
How many will he score tomorrow? Will he score at all? Will he start tomorrow? Um, yeah, I'm going for an optimistic 3-1, but it could literally be 4-5-6 or so anything. I'm not putting any bets on. If I did, it would only be for a Man United win, which the odds would be shit, so it's an absolute pound down the drain. Uh, so, yeah, that's it from me. Make sure you come back tomorrow for the watch, watch along. Three o'clock kickoff. We'll be here. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the Magpie Channel TV, and don't forget to comment below your starting 11 and your score prediction. Thanks for watching. Enjoy yourself.